We've got uh, Eric Malinowski with us. He uh, calls the uh, games for Colgate Radio. Of course, Arkansas and Colgate coming up at 1145 on Friday on True TV. And uh, so we'll get some insight here. Uh, Eric, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, guys. How are you? Doing great. Appreciate the uh, time today. So, I mean, walk us through a, uh, I'm sure, a, a season unlike no other, 15 games playing teams more than once. It's been uh, it's been quite a unique season, to, to say the least. Yeah, to say the least is right. And it's really interesting going into the NCAA tournament. At least a couple of years ago when Colgate played Tennessee, they had a couple of uh, major conference teams under their belt like, Arkan- or like Auburn, even though they uh, were handled pretty easily against Auburn. They at least had an SEC opponent under their belt. But going into this game, you really don't know what to expect, even though a couple of the players on the Colgate team, like Jordan Burns, Jack Ferguson, and Tucker Richardson, they have experience in the NCAA tournament. Still, though, they only play three teams during the regular season in Holy Cross, Army West Point, and Boston University. So a really small sample size not really knowing what to expect come tournament time. On paper, Colgate, one of their more talented teams in history, but how they match up against uh, the big boys in the dance, I mean, that's, well, we'll find out Friday. Eric, we had uh, Eric Musselman on the show yesterday, and, you know, when you watch Colgate play, the guy that jumps out is Jordan Burns, and he highlighted Jordan Burns, who a couple of years ago went off against Tennessee, scores 32 in that game. Muss has already watched tape of him. He's got Jordan pretty well scouted. This is a kid from Texas, and having watched him, you know, for the last couple of days, this is a guy that can play for anybody in the country. Yeah, one of those instances where Colgate got very lucky. He ended up uh, doing a prep year at the Kent School, and uh, I'm the Northeast, and I don't think he was recruited by anyone else, or at least seriously recruited by anyone else. So when Colgate came knocking, or at least Colgate was the first one there, and I think uh, Jordan comes from a great family, and when Jordan made it known that uh, he was thinking about Colgate and I think made an early commitment, then I think some other teams jumped in, but at that point his mom was like, no, you are a commit to Colgate. You're going to Colgate. Uh, get your education, and the rest is history. But, yeah, I mean, you just look at the talent that Jordan Burns is, and you kind of scratch your head, and you wonder uh, how he ended up all the way from Texas in the small Hamilton, New York, and a super, super talented kid. Yeah, and it's it, – I wonder with um, – because this is one of the uh, charms of March Madness to me is – that school that nobody gives a chance, but they got that one guy or those two guys that are actually big-time talents that can sometimes uh, foster an upset. I wonder, with the way the transfer portal's going, if this is kind of a uh, a, a thing that's uh, going to go uh, by the uh, by the boards in, in terms of, and it'd be unfortunate for the small schools because it's, you know, you see a Ja Morant at Murray State or you see, you know, Burns at Colgate and guys like that. That's kind of what, you know, makes the tournament really interesting sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting that you brought that up because Colgate did lose Rapless Ivanowskis to the transfer portal. He was a grad transfer to Cincinnati, and uh, I believe he has since declared himself a pro uh, and left the Cincinnati program and is now a pro, I I think, in in Lithuania. But, yeah, that is one of the cases. And there are a lot of kids. Uh, Jimmy Sotos from Bucknell. He earned the transfer portal. He's with Ohio State. I think he's injured. Uh, Nate Sestina last year went to Kentucky. So you bring up an interesting point. And, uh, you know, yeah, definitely it crosses everyone's mind when you see a super talented kid like Jordan Burns. Hopefully he's going to stay with Colgate for all four years, and he has. Uh, but, yeah, that, that could be going by the wayside in terms of it's definitely jumped way up, especially in the Patriot League in terms of kids not finishing with their schools. And you have to wonder, C.J. McCollum back in the day, would he have spent all his time at Lehigh if uh, if he was playing today? So it is very interesting. Eric Musselman mentioned yesterday that uh, that Matt Langley and his offense is one of those offenses that scares you a little bit because it's a Princeton style of offense. It's, he said it was kind of a, a simplified Princeton style of offense, but he pointed out like Nellie Cummings 
and uh, and and Tucker Richardson are two guys that that if you leave them alone, if you commit all of your energy to stopping Jordan Burns, these are two guys that can light you up from the outside. He also talked about pace of play with uh, with Colgate and how fast and how many points they'll they can put up. Yeah, 86 points per game, which I know Arkansas can score a lot too. So it'll be interesting. Does Colgate try to dictate the pace a little bit, or even though with the athleticism that Arkansas offers up? Are, is Colgate going to stay with their strength and uh, just try to go head-to-head with a team that can absolutely score in Arkansas as well? But, yeah, Jordan Burns, he gets the mainstream attention, Patriot League Player of the Year, but you brought up a couple of other kids in Tucker Richardson and Nellie Cummings. They've got a lot of scoring options. And then the kid that a lot of people forget about is Jack Ferguson, who is really – developed into his own this year he's the sixth man but he could definitely start and he is extremely efficient shooting beyond 50 percent from the arc he's also so going home they have for a this lot of scoring he, options other than jordan burns he, he's going home for this he's an indiana kid yeah fort wayne indiana it's interesting because they recruited a kid uh dana bat who has since graduated for colgate a big man um uh, from Homestead, Indiana, which uh, is the school that produced NBA. Well, I don't think he's in the NBA currently, but Caleb Swanigan, a star from Purdue, and it produced Dana Bat. And then I think uh, Dana must have told Jack how much he liked it at Colgate. So Jack ended up coming to Colgate as well. And they have definitely been great assets to the Colgate program, especially Jack. He's Known as a three-point shooter, but he can do so much more, and he has been an excellent player this year, his senior campaign. Talking with Eric Walinowski from Colgate Radio uh, with us here on Ruskin and Zach. So if you're the coaching staff there at Colgate, and you kind of alluded to, you know, we'll, we'll find out Friday, but how do you really know what you have in a basketball team when you've played four teams uh, in the uh, in the regular season? It's got to be difficult to do any kind of evaluation of what you really are as a, as a basketball team. Yeah, that is the great unknown. And I would assume coach Langle and the rest of the staff is just going to lean on their last NCAA tournament experience against Tennessee. I mean, what else can you do? You only played Patriot league schools and the three main schools that they played during the regular season did not have great years. Army West point played some non-conference games and they did pretty good Boston University, the reigning Patriot League tournament champ, they underachieved, and then Holy Cross did not have a good season. So you really don't have a good measuring stick, but I think you just have to hang your hat on the fact that they uh, held their own with Tennessee and then some and only lost by seven points. I know that's a stretch, but what else can you do? It's a great unknown. Sometimes when, you know, folks that cover and fans of, you know, of, of like power five conferences kind of take, you know, they look at a school like Colgate and we're like, we, you know, we don't even know where that is. But the last time Colgate was in the tournament, um, they put a scare into an SEC team. Yeah, absolutely. And it was one of those instances where it's one of the attractions to March, as you guys alluded to, the fact that Jordan Burns, he loves the big lights. I mean, don't get me wrong. Jordan Burns has had his off games before, but if he hits a couple shots, and he craves the attention. He great, craves the spotlight. He has NBA dreams. I mean, he shoots for the stars. So I think he sees. He saw the game against Tennessee, and I'm sure he sees this game against uh, Arkansas as where he can make a name for himself and where he can maybe get himself to the next level. So I think it's one of those instances where if you have a hot player that can take over the game like Jordan Burns, you have a chance. But obviously, he has to be on. As far as um, in these uh, in in these games, when it's not working right for Colgate, what's what are usually some of the things when when it's not working? What's what's going on with, with with Colgate during these games this year? Yeah, their shot isn't falling. It's just it's not the fact that they're not moving the ball. It's not that they're getting not getting open looks. I mean, uh, Matt Lango, he. he like you said, he's got a great offense, the Princeton style offense, but they get plenty of open looks. It's just when the shot isn't falling, which doesn't happen too often because they do have so many weapons. So it's usually not too many nights where everyone is off, uh, but that is a concern. And then uh, defensively, 
whenever you play a team like Arkansas or an SEC team or any team from a major conference, you have to deal usually with the athleticism mismatch and the size mismatch. So they have a couple of dependable big men down low in Keegan Records and Jeff Woodward. But if you get those two in foul trouble, uh, then there could be problems because then you're having a six foot seven freshman in Sam Thompson try to play the center position. And that could obviously be a nightmare defensively for Colgate. Eric, Derek and I are both broadcast nerds, and you mentioned to me yesterday that you're not actually making the trip. There's no radio broadcast for the uh, for, for the first round game. Now, d- during the regular season, did you get to travel? I mean, it, like Arkansas has got the SEC network, so it, the the guys who do the radio stuff could stay at home. But did you travel with the team to away games? How how did that work for you guys? No, unfortunately, it was just the home games, and then the uh, let's say Colgate was playing at Army West Point or at Holy Cross. Uh, the crews there would do the broadcast on uh, ESPN Plus. So that's how the games would be done. So unfortunately, yeah, it's just one of those years where kind of a gut punch where you don't get to travel with a team. You, you absolutely, I absolutely love to travel and to do the, all of that with the team. But unfortunately, this is one of those years where, where we just weren't able to. And Colgate really has gone the extra mile, as I know most schools have. Uh, with their COVID testing, uh, athletes three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And the only games that were canceled for Colgate this year were due to uh, positive cases or false positives at the other schools. Mm. So Colgate really, even though I would have loved to travel and stuff, Colgate, I have to commend them for for doing a great job as uh, being cautious and making sure that there were no outbreaks and that Colgate men's basketball could play as many games as they possibly could. All right, coming up at uh, 11.45 on Friday, True TV, uh, Arkansas and Colgate in March Madness. Uh, Eric, thanks so much for the time today. We really appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Uh, Take care. All right. Eric Malinowski from uh, Colgate Radio with us here on Ruskin and Zach. So there you go. Look, if, if, if I'm just sitting here thinking about this, mm-hmm. that if if Arkansas, everyone here assumes this is a blowout and there's not even any point in, in playing, going through with the proceedings here. But if there's a bunch of, if you start stacking up blown defensive assignments in this game for Arkansas against Colgate's offense, you're going to look up and you're going to see a score that you're like, how did that happen? It's going to be closer than you think. Because if the the offense being, you know, the Prince and style or whatever, that's that's a little bit different than what you're, you see, and it's not the true Prince it's style, not true, but like Musk but said with, yesterday, with a lot, of, of, lot of back cuts. You got to be aware. You got to be. You got to know your assignment. And, and I uh, hate I hate cliches, but you better have you know the, the guys that are, are playing. If you're playing zone, you got to have your head on a swivel and look for those backdoor cuts because that's what they're going to do. Right. And if they they'll hit those for easy layups. The other thing that they do is they'll send the guys to the corners, and man, they'll do that dribble, drive, and kick, and they suddenly you've got wide open threes. And you know he mentioned the the Ferguson kid from Indiana. That guy can shoot it. He can shoot from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, they're 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 dangerous enough to get your attention, but I, I think and I said this on Monday, they will have to alter their game plan more than Arkansas alters theirs. Yeah. And I don't know how far because they don't have great athletes outside of Burns and Cummings. I don't know how many. I don't know how far they can stretch that. It's not like they're going to take Justin Smith off the dribble. It's not going to happen. Right. So they've got their system has to be going, and as Eric just said, their shots have to be falling. And if they are falling, they can keep this closer than they can make this uncomfortable. But I think Arkansas's if, defense will will. I, they have not faced Look, an animal they, like this. They have, um, they have systematically picked everybody apart that they faced over the last 12, 13 ball games, more or less. So it would be a fool's errand to not assume that the um, the op- to assume the opposite will occur in this game. Meaning that Arkansas will probably systematically pick them apart defensively, as they have everyone else in this run over the last six weeks. Look at so. what Muss has done when they've played teams with really good point guards. What do they do? They get the ball out of his hands. How do you do it? You double him. You you hound him. Here's the thing, too, is that they've got four days to prepare for this. Yes, they will be ready. His record with four days to prepare, Scotty Borland did it. It's like it's insane. What is it's it's Belichickian mm-hmm. Musselman's record in uh, with with multiple ga- days to prepare for a game, and for a different style like this, it's going to be. Uh, be he even told Zim, I mean, they faced it. When we had him on yesterday, he said, you know, we faced yeah. this. We know how to how to deal with this. The thing that would scare me 
if I'm Arkansas, is that open looks. If you close shooters down and make them work and, and alter their shot just a little bit, you're going to have success. But if you're giving guys like Ferguson or Burns or Cummings or any of these guys, you know, the, the Fredericks and Kent, if you give them open looks, they'll hit them. And yeah. they'll hit them, and they'll hit them with great frequency, and that can cause some issues. Yeah, but I have a feeling Devo is going to just hound Jordan Burns, and that will be. You know that note I'm talking about on Musselman with uh, it was only a couple weeks ago, and now I can't find it on uh, Google. No, I'll look it up here on uh, okay. Scotty Bordelon's uh, deal here, but uh, there is um, well, it's hard to find Scotty Bordelon on Twitter all of a sudden. You get a race too. I mean, I'm just terrible at this whole social media deal. And yes, we've I, noticed. And, and the, the other thing is, is I don't care to get any better. I couldn't care less. And, yes, that's the right way you say that. Couldn't care less. So um, it is what it is.